Hello and welcome to another iteration of There's People Inside My House and for that reason I cannot modulate my voice as I should so I don't know if I'm speaking too loud or if I'm speaking not that loud. Welcome yourself to wear headphones if you want but I may or not scream. I don't really know actually. So yeah, that's, that's the mood for the video today. Hello beautiful bookworms, my name is Katharina and welcome to my channel and today I am going to be doing my belated November wrap-up. So we are already in December full-on and what I decided to do is since I haven't read that much in November I am going to also tell you two books that I finished in the beginning of December since I haven't filmed my wrap-up until the point where I finish them. I don't know if I'm making sense. You get me, you get me. There's there's going to be books that I finished only in December, but for the sake of me just keeping my head straight, this is what you're gonna do. So for this video, we're only going to have one physical book, is a monster of the book, and the rest of them are all going to be ebooks because I had a lot of eARCs provided to me by NetGalley, so all of these eARCs that I'm going to be talking about are provided by NetGalley and I am very thankful to them, to the publishers and the authors, but all of the opinions are of course my own and sadly I haven't had an awesome luck with the books that I read by NetGalley. The physical one I really enjoyed and I might talk about it in the middle of the others. I hope that I can insert photographs of the eARCs, but if for some reason my editing program does not let me do that, I will leave down below the links of the books so that you can know more about them. So, beginning from the beginning, the first eARC that I've read is Vampires and Victims by Martin M. McShane, and this came out on August 23rd, but I only read it now in November. So, I have read this a long time ago already, it was the first book that I read in November, and I think I started it at the end of October, even. So I'm not entirely sure of what it really was about, but I think it was sort of a fairy tale-ish Dickinson sort of style writing in which there were these people, these poor people, that started being hunted by vampires. So there, there's supposed to be a treaty between the humans and the vampires. The vampires would not eat humans unless they are like the trash of society basically like drug addicts and um people homeless people and whatever um and in return the humans would not hunt vampires because they have developed a way to hunt them with a game called vampires and victims which whatever um but apparently the vampires have uh had an uprise because they want to drink human blood and not only bad blood as they call it and so they just want to get the poor kids and the poor people and eat them which the concept was intriguing and it was written in sort of a fairy tale-ish way sort of which was mildly enjoyable but it just got boring at one time and I couldn't really... I started skimming pages and I really wanted to finish it but it really wasn't for me. However, I think that if the author puts more effort into plot points and characters, the writing style is nice. So that wasn't the worst thing in the world, but I didn't really enjoy the book. It's interesting, the world building is kind of cool, but it doesn't have too much emphasis on what it wants to do, and so it kind of lost interest for me. Then the second eARC that I read is Visited by Dreamscape, and that is by Louise Worthington, and that came out on August 9th, but as I said, I only read it in November because I'm a bit late with my eARCs, um, as we all are. Uh, but yeah, so Visited by Dreamscape, it's an anthology of short horror short stories, and some of them were interesting, some of them not so much, as every single person that already has read a short story anthology will tell you not every single one of them are amazing, and that's okay. And there were ones that were fun, so it, it was pretty much just like any other anthology. It was cool to read, but I wanted a bit more. I thought it was going to be more creepy, more terrifying. I did enjoy some of them a lot, but then the ones that I didn't, I really didn't. So it's kind of middle of the road for me. It was interesting, the writing style was interesting, but it wasn't... Yeah, 
I don't know, I, I am not having luck with these e-arcs. <laughs> then a terrible, terrible e-arc that I read. My god, I hated that e-arc. I am so sorry, I know that writers have a lot of difficult time writing. I too aspire to be a writer someday and I know that it's not the easiest job in the world and that reviewers just tell, oh my god, this sucks and that's terrible because it's someone's work. But this, this, I couldn't stand for this. And that is Rage by Sue Rovins. And this supposedly came out on the 22nd of June. And I only read it now. And I don't think it was a well-written book. I don't think it was a respectful book. And to be quite honest, I hated every single one of the characters. I thought that the plot was just convenient. And had no real motivation for what happened. It wasn't great. I really did not like Rage and that's that's really bad because I thought it was going to be one of the best arcs that I had to read and it wasn't. So Rage is basically the story of this dude. He has been bullied his whole life. He is described as being extremely fat and having a lot of uh, troubles with his self-esteem and with the person that he is and one day he just had enough and he wants to kill himself. So trigger warnings for that. I'm sorry uh, for not mentioning it earlier. Um, so he goes and he throws himself off a building, but the firemen can get him, like he, he is not successful in killing himself. Um, so he starts a therapy with pretty much the worst therapist in ever before written. I don't know. I It was terrible. She had problems that she had to solve. And we all have problems that we have to solve, so that's okay. But she was such an unlikable person and she always thought that she had to say stuff when the ideal was to listen to the patient. She always told him not to say stuff and to say other stuff that she wanted him to say. And as someone that has majored in psychology, that's not the way to do therapy. And of course, I have never been with a difficult suicide case before or suicide attempt before, but... I think that I would try to actually be respectful of the person that I have in front of me and be ethical in the way that I deal with him. And she was not ethical at all. Like, I don't know if Sue Rovins thinks that this is the way to do therapy or if the author just went and just wrote about therapy like it is nobody's business. Because I don't know, I kind of felt like that person was never in therapy or never actually researched how to do therapy. And I might be here talking and the author might have some relationship with therapy, but if the author does have relationship with therapy, then wow, it was either a horrifying experience or the author simply doesn't know what therapy is. I'm very sorry, it was terrible. Every single person, ah, oh, and so because he has been mistreated all his life, um, this dude, which is never actually characterized by anything else rather than the fact that he's fat, which the fat phobia in this, I understand why we had to be called upon the fact that he had um, self esteem issues, but it borders on fat phobia so much that I can't enjoy it. And so because he had low self-esteem and he wanted something to live for, he decides that he's going to murder a uh, fit, stupid, drunk, uh, male people. Because. And he has a new purpose in life. And I'm like, uh, okay, I mean, that might happen, but it's not that common. And the way that this person wrote this book kind of sounded like, well, if you commit suicide, but you can't kill yourself, you're going to think that the solution for your self-esteem is to actually murder people. And I, I, and it, mm -hmm, I can't, I can't, because... That's now not how therapy works, that's not how recovery works, and yeah, and not everyone that has low self-esteem is a serial killer, people, and actually, it's, it's really, that, that's not the point. If you're bullied when you're young or in your adult age, it doesn't mean you're going to be aggressive, it's not, 
it was just a correlation, you know, that, that the author did that I couldn't understand because it, it really had no purpose. There were no motivations rather than, well, the world owes me. And so focus on my face, please. And so I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. And, and I was like, but why though? <laughs> the, uh, there was no, and then the therapist was like, something is wrong with this man because he's disgusting. And I was like, you're not supposed to judge the people that come to you for help. Especially when he actually attempted to kill himself. But whatever. We're just gonna... I hated that. I don't recommend that book. But if you want to read it, I mean, sure. Go at it. And then another e-arc that I read, and the final e-arc that I read in November, was The Hawthorne School by Sylvie Perry. And this came out on the 7th of December 2021. So if you want to get it, now you can. And the Hawthorne School, the beginning of it was awesome. The premise is that this mother is a single mom and her child is a very difficult child. He might have ADHD or just be one of those spoiled brats that you don't give them enough education and so they don't know limits. I don't know because it's never addressed, but that's not the actual point of the story, so that's okay. Um, and the story is that she is kind of struggling. She doesn't know where to put her child. All of the teachers of the kid just think that he's not a good kid, that he's not being well educated by the mom. And she just wants out. She wants a school that understands her child. And, you know, she's struggling as a mom. And so she finds the Hawthorne School, which kind of lets the child get into the school um, and just ask the mom, like, you don't have the money to pay our tuition, so you can just volunteer here as a masseuse, because she is a masseuse, and as someone that does work for the school. And she's like, okay, that's pretty cool, but soon you start to understand. And when I say you, it's you, the reader, because the mom is oblivious until the end of the story, that that's cool. Kind of looks like a cult, and it's very definitely a cult, and that child is not safe there. And the problem with the Hawthorne School is the premise is great, the beginning of it is extremely interesting. However, until the very end, there is no change in the dialogue, in the discourse, in everything that's going on. There's no absolute change in anything. The mom remains oblivious. You, you see this mother and this child getting into this cult and there's no fighting it. There's no thinking that stuff is strange. There's no, you know, it's like they accepted it pretty fast until the ending where, of course, it's going to be a change, but it sounded such a forced change because everyone was accepting everything. And you, as the reader, knew what was going on because it's impossible not to know if you have two brain cells what was going on. And it's just, it wasn't, it was like, for heaven's sake, woman, take that child and go away from there. It was just, mm, I don't know. I wanted to like it, and in the beginning I was really enjoying it, but then it bored me again, and I was like, why are you giving your child away to this fucking cult? Do something, he's your child, I don't know. I think my anxiety and my hypervigilance might help with the fact that I could understand that something wrong was going on there. Um, but I also thought our main character was pretty dumb, and I'm okay with dumb characters. But it looks like it served the plot. Everything that was strange that happened, she was like, oh, that's fine, because it's a very special school. And I was like, you're just kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself, because you want to. There's no way that a mom would find this okay. But who am I? I'm not a mother, so I don't know, but... It wasn't that great. It really wasn't. I, I shook out with these yarks. Then for the physical book that I read in November, we are not surprised about this. It was Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. And yes, this is the signed edition, the Waterstone signed edition, which means it has black sprayed edges and it has the De Leon symbol. And it's beautiful and I love it. I didn't give this five stars, which I think it's something that I should say right off the bat because I think every single person that I read this book with was expecting me to give it five stars and I didn't. I gave it four stars because I do feel like in the beginning, Gabriel is a character that I cannot connect with. He's always whining, even though... Well, I should tell you what this is about, shouldn't I? 
So this is basically the story about Gabriel. The story starts with Gabriel as um, an adult and he is captured by vampires and the vampires are forcing him to tell his story. And so it has two specific timelines when he was younger and learning how to fight vampires because he's kind of a vampire hunter um, and then when he's older and he's getting to the point where he is now and he's known as the last of the silver saints or the last of the order that actually hunts vampires so um in the beginning and young gabriel in the beginning he's very whiny for no absolute reason um okay you can say that there were real reasons for him to be whiny but the fact is you kind of learn that he has a propensity to be one of the greatest and he wants to be a great vampire killer so i don't know i mean it kind of looks like he only says stuff to whine about stuff but and so that part for me wasn't very compelling and I kept stopping and stopping. However, when you start seeing more of the future, uh, future Gabriel, so older Gabriel, and more into his adolescence, I start to like Gabriel more and I even start speaking like Gabriel in my life, which we do not want that. So I think by the ending of this, I am a true fan of The Empire of the Vampire and I want to read the second book. ASAP because my god the ending of this was a killer but the beginning of this was slow and I understand why some people did not enjoy it as much because if the beginning does not lock you in how are you going to read an almost 800 page book I understand but it's really cool I love the world building of this I love how bloody and terrible it is even though some of the things I'm like okay but this is here just to be emo okay I'm fine with that but Okay, um, I don't know, I love it. I think it's a step up from Nevernight and I hope that it's going to be better than the ending of that trilogy because the ending of that trilogy for me was amazing. And so I cannot wait for the next one. It was a score in a month of low reads, I think. And then for the two books that I actually read in the beginning of December and already finished, I read Song of Dragons by Aja James. And this book actually is going to come out on the 24th of December, apparently, so it's a Christmas gift if you want. And this is the second book in a series, which I had no idea, but you can read it perfectly without having read the first one. It's not that complicated in plot-wise and character-wise, and it's basically an erotic book, which I knew about it, but the concept was sort of intriguing because it was erotica with mythical creatures. So it's about dragons and phoenixes and centaurs and stuff. And I was like, okay, but how are you going to do this in a way that is not disgusting? And so I wanted to read this just because it kind of intrigued me. I'm sorry if you're going to unsubscribe and you think that I'm a terrible person for wanting to connect with the depths of how this works, but I really wanted to know. And so I started reading it and it was fairly strange. Like apparently our main characters are sort of in a quest to retrieve some stuff for the emperor of the dragons. Um, and so our main characters are a dragon and his mate, a phoenix, and then there's another dragoness. Um, and basically they have to retrieve stuff. So I'm guessing that each book is going to be something that you're going to retrieve and you get something of the past of them and you get something focused on new characters. And um, this time they go to ancient Greece to retrieve this, the Song of Destiny? I think that's, that's it, the Song of Destiny. I don't know. But regardless from that, uh, Obviously, the plot has a lot of um, steamy scenes, um, also between the two males, because they're not really males, because it's a dragon and a phoenix, but whatever. But also between other creatures and our dragoness. Um, so it's very strange, but it was an incredibly enjoyable read. And I read this when I was going to a conference and I had to be very focused and work a lot. And I was out of my city and I was in trips by train and stuff so it was kind of interesting to actually read something that took my mind off everything and for that i am thankful was it the best prose no <laughs> was it the best plot points absolutely not the plot points were only there to get you to get to the sex scenes which i mean it's normal because it was an erotica it was a smut thingy so it's okay and i think that if you like to read that just read that it's okay you don't have to 
force yourself to say you didn't like it. I like it. I think some of the scenes were a bit strange, but the other ones were fine, and the plot was... It was fun. It was a fun book, and for that reason alone, it's a middle of the road for me. So it's cool. It's fun. And then the next book is called Bleed More, Body More, and this is by Ian Kirkpatrick, and it came out on the 21st of October, which would be fitting because supposedly it was a horror book when it actually was only horrifyingly boring, sadly. So this book, from what I understand, is supposed to be about Baltimore, and it's supposed to be about a city where people are always getting killed or robbed or maimed or... I mean, it's, it's a bad city. And actually, it does seem like the author hates this city. It's a real city that exists. Um, it has real settings like this supposed park, which is the park where most killers hide their bodies or kill people or whatever, I don't know. I've seen something about it, but I haven't researched deeply, I'm very sorry. Um, I think it's Leakin Park? I don't know. But regardless of that, it kind of sounded like this was a hate story about Baltimore. I'm sorry, that's what it felt like. And reading it is supposed to be the story of this girl, she works in a car shop and one day she's going to get a car from her oldest friend in the world and inside of that car there is a dead body uh, and that sparks up all of a confusion of was it the friend that killed that person but the friend is also missing um, does she believe that he didn't does she not but at the same time it's supposed to be horror like there's a killer on the loose but it's really not it's kind of sort of like a, a horror fantasy in a way because you get to see the great beyond and the reapers of souls and man it was confusing i mean it wasn't confusing you could understand it but i spent the entirety of the book saying really was there a need for this actually i felt like the writing had a lot of passion and there were a lot of lines that i really enjoy but the characters were very bland even our main character that had motivations and problems of her own was a bit bland and she only had rage in her and passion in her which kind of sounds like an author self-insert uh, she hates the town, as probably the author does as well, and that's it. That's the story and about the great beyond and how people that die don't always stay dead, which could be awesome, and the world building is pretty cool for that part, but then it just stops, and it's no longer cool. It's just, yeah, okay, but why are we doing this again, and why are we talking about this, and what are these lines? I don't know. Some parts of these were cool. But in the great scheme of things, it wasn't a great book, which is really sad because I am actually hoping that Ian Kirkpatrick writes something else with the same passion, but with a little bit less of hate and a little bit more focus on characters and plot, because if that happened, it would be a great book, I think. So yeah, that's it. So yeah, guys, that's everything that I read in November and in this first little part of December before I updated you. So I hopefully will read more in the second part of December so that I have a December wrap-up, but we will see. We never know. There's a lot of work to be done before the year ends. Ah, okay. I, I, I am too worked exhausted. So that's going to be all for today and I hope that you guys, if you have any questions or have read any of these books or want to read any of these books, just tell me something in the comments down below. But yeah guys, happy readings to you all. Bye!